from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Summit New York 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at AWS Summit New York uh, 2018. About 10,000 uh, AWSers coming together. This is an amazing ecosystem. AWS to summits all over the country, all over the world. reInvent, of course, is a big show. In, uh, in Vegas in November, that's, I'm guessing, 50,000 plus this year. But we're excited to be here and we're excited for our next guest. It's Mark Raiderman, he's the Managing Director of Technology Enablement uh, for Slalom. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. And uh, Rihanna Sukram, she's Strategic Alliances Director, also for Slalom. Welcome. Thank you. So, uh, have you guys been to the show before? Yes, we have. We have, it's our third year participating third at the year summit. Third year participating, so what are your uh, impressions? It was like 10,000 people, it's bananas. I mean, I've been here since 2016 and it's incredible to see the growth and the number of people that are coming year over year. Um, I mean, just this year alone, we've had over 300 visitors at our booth, which is pretty fantastic so far. It's crazy because, you know, we go to a lot of shows and, you know, some booths are busy at some shows <laughs> and oftentimes they're not. But I mean, right. you couldn't really find a really more active ecosystem. And they've been lined up all day long yep. since they opened we've, up we've the thing. We've been packing uh, it in. <laughs> it's been pretty so, exciting. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right, so look, for people that aren't familiar with the company, give us an overview of Slalom. Uh, great, so we're about uh, 5,000 professionals in 27 markets in North America and the UK. Uh, we're a full service business and technology consulting company. Uh, a lot of that energy goes towards the AWS ecosystem. Right, About 20, 25 percent right. of okay. uh, work effort is uh, in, in the direction of AWS, and uh, it's paid off handsomely for our clients. Uh, have some great outcomes, some great stories to tell around uh, success with AWS. So I'm curious as to how the conversation has changed over the years. When you first engage with a new client, um, how their perception of their public cloud strategy is different today than say when it was three years ago when you were here for your first summit? Sure, I think, I mean initially the, um, the game was uh, move, move what I have to the cloud. Right. You, know, do, uh, you know, find me some efficiencies, cost savings. Uh, today it's all about innovation. Yep. You know, it's about helping customers deliver digital product faster, more efficiently, uh, make the best use of the AWS ecosystem. Uh, to get creative, to do things around machine learning and artificial intelligence, right. uh, real-time uh, market data, uh, native solutions, you know, right. anything that's basically allowing our customers to bring value to their customers faster. Um, and there's a lot more of that going on. We're seeing a lot of clients come to us these days for proofs of concepts or POCs uh, to help, as Mark was saying, with innovation. So, you know, let's stand up a two-week proof of concept around a machine learning model, or let's do something with one of the artificial intelligence services like um, recognition or comprehend. Right, and, right. You know, we're we're using those POCs as you know, here's art of the possible on what you can do. Right. We get the clients really excited about that and then they're moving forward with full-blown production solutions. Yes, yeah, pretty neat. We have Dr. Matt Wood coming on actually right after you guys uh, and you know, he's leading up that whole charge and it's pretty amazing how you can apply machine learning and artificial intelligence to so many different Absolutely. applications. Yeah. I wonder if there's some kind of fun ones that who would have thought that, that some of your clients have done that have been pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, you want to? Uh, sure, we actually did uh, a proof of concept for a medical company called Veripad. Um, they test out fraudulent medication uh, using a paper analytical device product. So Fraudulent medication. Fra fra fraudulent medication. So um, it's, a, it's a big problem overseas in third world countries where medication is being brought over that's not real. So you know they're selling ibuprofen and acetaminophen and it's not actually the drug that's being sold in Kenya, for example. Uh, this company, Veripad, was able to create um, a product where you can scratch off on a paper analytical device um, the crushed pill, test it in a solution, and it will tell you, um, using the human eye, whether or not you know this um, accuracy is what you think it is. Right. And what we were able to do with machine learning is actually use Amazon recognition to help uh, compare that paper analytical device, once you take a picture of it, to a database of thousands of comparable solutions. And we were able to increase accuracy by 10% um, over the human intervention of it. So 
it's pretty so the cool. accuracy of the diagnosis. So basically, they drag the pill on the piece of paper, mm -hmm. it makes some kind of a color. You take yep. a picture, yeah. compare it against the database, yep. and using it tells machine you what's learning. In the pill. Exactly. Ultimately, saves lives. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Because who's who's the client? Is it doctors that are testing the pills, or it's hospitals? Who's the, co the, the client is a company called Veripad, and right, they're who's actually the, who's their consumers. They're consumer, oh, consumers, consumers ultimately. Yeah. But they're actually shopping it around right now to the FDA equivalent in third world countries like Kenya and um, Nigeria. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And we, we've been we've done work in and around the music industry, you know. Ultimately, with you know greater customer insights, ultimately leading towards can you can you predict the next hit? You know what yeah. what, what are people going to gravitate towards? What right. kind of music people are going to gravitate yeah. towards? Uh, we've done work within the automotive industry, uh, again you know geared a lot towards efficiency, right? Uh, and uh, anti theft things of that nature. Yeah. So it's really it's been put to great use. So how long did it take people to figure out that this isn't a cost savings play, this is an innovation play? Uh, I'm, I'm with, with machine learning, I mean, I, I think that well, uh, just people in, in got Amazon that. In gen, I mean, AWS in general, I mean, so many times people think it's like speed of deployment and it's, you know, I don't want to spin up a bunch of servers, I don't want to pay for 50% of capacity that I'm never going to use. Yeah. That's all fine and dandy, but that's really not where the big, big impact right, is. Right, right. I'd say over the past several years, I mean, the, the lean has been more and more towards I can innovate faster. You know, it's hard to kind of put your finger on exactly, you know, when did that inflection point right, right. take place, but, but you know, uh, we found ourselves having more conversations about that versus uh, help me take my stuff to the cloud. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 such, it's such a more important play. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that people didn't get at first, right? And, and I'm just curious how the security conversations have evolved. Security, right, always needs to be top of mind. It needs to be baked in all over the place. In early days, that was kind of a knock on public cloud. I think we're, we're long past that, but still I'm curious how the security discussion still evolves, both in the context of AWS in general, but also in their solutions more broadly. So, so it's, it's present in, in many of the industries we're doing work with. I mean, we're in, we're in pharma and healthcare, we're in financial services, so it's, it's kind of omnipresent, if you will. Right. Uh, we find that uh, what's worked really well for us is to have partnerships, not only with IT and the business, but also with InfoSec. Um, and, and when we find ourselves uh, starting a dialogue early uh, with InfoSec, so they could get to know us and understand our skills and see um, that our people can kind of talk that talk and walk that walk as well, I think it breaks down a lot of barriers. Yeah, it's bringing you know, them along the journey and, okay. and making sure that they understand um, you know, the full stack of the shared security model um, and everything that comes with it. Right, and then what about the actual management of their AWS infrastructure? So again, early knock was, you know, it's always cheaper to buy than rent, which we know is not necessarily true, and you, know, you get kind of runaway costs if you're not keeping track of stuff because you, you're not used to paying by the hour. How are people adjusting to, to kind of the CapEx versus um, you know, ongoing expenses and, and, and the management of this new way to, to buy, consume, and deliver IT services? Right, so uh, at, at the end of the day, you still have to be smart about how you design and architect and build solutions. Uh, you could still be inefficient in the cloud. Uh, so for us, you know, a, a lot of our effort um, is geared towards um, doing, you know, doing it the right way, if you will. Right. You know, what, what's the appropriate way to architect and design and deploy uh, on top AWS? Right. Um, yeah. It's just funny because you, you so often hear about the the cloud benefit of spinning up, right? When you need excess capacity, spin sure. up, spin up, spin up. Yeah. You don't hear enough talk of spin down, spin down, spin down. Right. You know, when you don't need it, and that's where you do get some of yeah. these efficiencies and cost savings. Sure. When you don't need your services turned on over the weekend or the holiday And or even whatever. through the serverless features that are coming out through right. Amazon Web Services, we're seeing a lot of clients who, you know, five, 10 years ago, EC2, S3, you know, doing everything within those consumption models, and now really looking at leveraging serverless and Lambda functions and all of those things to, to create even more efficiencies. Right. What about like spot market and some of those types of things? We see a lot of guys in the ecosystem that are buying and selling excess capacity and there's a whole right. you know, kind of secondary market. Are your customers taking advantage of that? Or I think some are and the, obviously the more sophisticated ones are. Right. I mean that's not necessarily a space we play in. We'll, we'll partner more with companies that are looking, right, right, you know, right. helping to analyze that arena. Right. Uh, to, to Rihanna's point though, I mean the, the, the direction of more and more being serverless, uh, you know, just easier to maintain uh, easier to kind of uh, run and operate uh, with smaller staffs, easier to be nimble. 
you know, so that the needle is, is clearly moving more and more in that direction and that's something we're very, we've been very aggressive you know, about getting getting uh, on top of and you know, riding that wave with our customers. Right. Yeah. And then what about two kind of like one-time workloads, whether it's a big test or some big batch run or you know, things that before you couldn't do easily because you had to add all this extra capacity, capacity but yeah. now you can go out and you can do some of these things without necessarily building the infrastructure that you had sure. in the past. Yep. Absolutely. Opens up a good innovation, yeah, uh, good absolutely. innovation path. All right. So I can't believe we're uh, July, like halfway through July, which is bananas. We're almost. <laughs> so what are some of your priorities looking to the balance of 2018? It's a great. It's a better question when it's January, but not yeah. July. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. But you know, so what are Still some things you guys are working on um, over the next six months? I think you know the one of the biggest areas that we're seeing with growth in at least the New York market is machine learning. So I think a couple of new services were released today during the keynote. Definitely want to get our hands into those and create new POCs and continue to ride that wave throughout the end of the year. Um, Mark, from from your point of view, beyond yeah. ML. So uh, I, you know, just continuing down this uh, innovation path. Yeah. Um, I, you know, more and more just opportunities to kind of break new ground. Uh, I mentioned to you before the camera started rolling, uh, you know, more and more of our solutions are multifaceted, so, you know, we're, we're very big AWS fans, but a lot of the work that product that we're doing uh, is integrating in with legacy, is integrating in with other, you know, other mainstream platforms, right. and, and together they're forming uh, a, a positive outcome, right? You know, so for us, you know, I think that's where we've been able to differentiate ourselves when it comes to, you know, the you know being best of breed on top of AWS, but also bringing in uh, uh, tools like Salesforce and AEM yeah. and other other platforms where, at the end of the day, you know, when you look at a whole solution, Ladies, you know, yeah. those end up being some of the other important facets. Right. For those I would say the the transformation piece. So you have a lot of customers that you know, started on their cloud journey, migrating workloads into the cloud, and a lot of them are now taking that step back and saying, how do I integrate my cloud solution with all of the other enterprise apps, and right. you know, how do I enable the people and the process aspect of my organization beyond the tool set? Right. So continuing, you know, helping our customers handle all of that transformation piece. It's pouring outside if you hear the guy yeah. talking. Javits <laughs> is flooding, it's going to turn into the arc and we're all going to float under, down the right East now. River to the uh, Statue of Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I'll mention just in terms of second half focus, uh, part of our business is strategy. Uh, and uh, more and more what we're seeing is, is business strategy going hand in hand with technology. Absolutely. Right. So helping companies understand you know, how they're going to build it, how they're going to be successful launching a product, but also understanding the value realization you know, putting, framing that up for them as well, understanding a good business case, right. you know, so that they understand, you know, what constitutes success. Right. So our strategy uh, consultants are, you know, end up going hand in hand quite often. Um, our consultants that focus on org design, organizational effectiveness, mm -hmm. you know, where we're changing the fabric of these organizations. Right, right. So that, that becomes a really important part of of kind of help easing them into kind of the new world order, right. if you yeah. will. Well, you know, right, it's always people in process is way harder than the technology. Absolutely. You guys are in the business and yeah, yeah. price spend an inordinate you amount bet. of time. Mm -hmm. They could have it, but you must be doing something right, a billion in revenue on your way to two. You bet. 5,000 people, so uh, thanks again for stopping by. Our pleasure. Thank you Mark for Rihanna, us. And, uh, and best of luck going forward. Thanks so Thank much. You. All right, he's Mark, she's Rihanna, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE from AWS. Reinvent, or not reinvent, that's coming up. <laughs> this is Summit in New York City, in the rain. Thanks for watching. Oh.